This video is sponsored by Fast Hosts. Just answer this techie test question in the link below for a chance to win the ultimate tech bundle and dream PC setup. Okay, we're gonna start this video with a blind test. Will I be able to tell the difference between 144, 240, and 360 hertz? Because this is a 360 hertz monitor. So Pete behind the camera is gonna switch the refresh rates. I'm not gonna know which one's which, and then let's see if I can get it right. Okay, first test. Okay, yeah, first one. All right. Okay, feels good. Um, have you double bluffed me? Is it still 360, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's either 240 or 360. I'm not sure. Let me have a think. Change it to the next one, and then let's see what happens. I've already done. I just enjoy you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is the second one. This feels slower. I think this is gonna be the 144. Oh, I think this might be the 144. Last one. Okay. So, okay, that's much smoother. I think, okay, I think this is 360. It is. Is it? It is 360. That's amazing. I think the last one was 144 and the first one was 240. That's exactly right. I'm 30 next month or in like a few weeks time and I'm surprised I can see it because these sort of 360 hertz monitors I've always thought are kind of like just for esports and pro gamers and 17 year old kids who have much faster response times than me. So I'm kind of impressed that I could see the difference. It's subtle, it is subtle between 240 and 360, but maybe this, is, maybe this is worth it. So I've sort of answered the big question of whether you can actually notice 360 Hertz, but there's a bit more to it. So this is the ASUS ROG Swift PG259QM. It's a 24.5 inch 1080p IPS monitor that's mainly for pro gaming and esports. But it's that ridiculous 360 Hz refresh that's the standout. So the idea is the high refresh rate and the low response time and also the G-Sync should, as they should, give you a competitive advantage. I've also got no speakers here and I'm <laughs> leaning across the desk. Yes! <laughs> and this is especially helpful in fast-paced shooters like this, where you see enemies sooner and then you can react more quickly. But the problem is, while 360 hertz is great in theory, how many of us have PCs that can push out 360 FPS without resorting to potato mode graphics? It's pretty expensive as well, 650 pounds or $700 for a 24 and a half inch monitor. This had better be something pretty special. And this is clearly aimed at pro gamers and serious enthusiasts. And for them, this monitor is getting on for perfect. But for the rest of us, it is worth thinking about if your system can even keep up. Although, of course, it's not just for gaming. I mean, everything you do on the desktop just feels so much faster. But it's not all about that crazy refresh rate. And the rest of this monitor is actually pretty great as well. With a fast IPS panel, one millisecond response time, NVIDIA G-Sync and ultra low motion blur, and HDR. It also gets pretty bright, and color accuracy is better than most gaming screens, uh, covering 98% of the sRGB color gamut, although I probably wouldn't want to rely on this for any proper photo or video editing. Now, just a bit of a tangent, but do you guys fancy winning an ultimate tech bundle and dream PC setup worth up to £5,000? Well, Fast Hosts, who are kindly sponsoring this video and who offer everything you need when it comes to websites, from buying your own domain to building and hosting it, they're basically your one-stop shop for making a great website. Well, they're giving you the chance to win this ultimate tech bundle, and all you have to do is answer this one techie test question. Which tech company was founded first, NVIDIA or AMD? Just click the link below and then give the correct answer, obviously, and you could win. This competition is UK only, I'm afraid, but best of luck and don't worry, I've got lots more competitions coming soon if you're not from the UK. But definitely check out Fast Host if you're looking to create a website. They really do have everything you need and the best part is it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. So why not give Fast Host a try? Design-wise, it's a really solid bit of kit actually and it's surprisingly heavy, although that's nearly all down to the stand and the base. So it feels sturdy and we also get a good range of movement from uh, height and tilt adjustment, a little bit of pivoting there, uh, and you can also fully rotate it if you like. If you want your 360Hz gaming monitor in portrait mode like that, you have that option. So it's well built, really solid, and yeah, pretty flexible as well. Just like me. <laughs> 
The bezels are pretty slim, which keeps the overall size down, although at 24.5 inches, it's not exactly big anyway. Although apparently this is the kind of size pro gamers and esports athletes want to have anyway, as it keeps everything in their eye line. But I do like the look overall. It's clean and not too gamery, although it's a different story around the back with creases, detailing, and this RGB ASUS ROG logo giving me the evil eye. You can control this via the AuraSync app or using the on-screen controls. Speaking of controls, we get a joystick and four buttons, so it's actually really easy to navigate the on-screen display. As for ports, we get a single DisplayPort 1.4b, which you'll need to use if you want 360Hz, as HDMI 2s top out at 240Hz. We also get two USB 3 downstreams, as well as a headphone jack. We don't get any built-in speakers, which isn't ideal, but I guess it's to be expected because if you're going to buy something like this, chances are you have a good pair of gaming headphones anyway. Importantly though, the so-called fast IPS panel does exactly what it needs to. Being IPS, the viewing angles are good, and at around 500 nits of brightness, it's easy to see even in a well-lit room. So image quality really is very good on this. I think the only limiting factor is the resolution, but then again, 1080p is the only way you're going to get anything close to 360 FPS in game. So of course it makes sense being a gaming monitor. It is also marketed as supporting high dynamic range or HDR, so if I turn it on, in the window settings, and then if I uh, refresh this page, 1080p, HDR. So you can technically get high dynamic range out of this, but it's not that impressive to be honest. Uh, it doesn't even support the basic Display HDR 400 spec, so it's not something I'd use very often. And I suspect if you are an enthusiast gamer, it's not something you'd even probably play with anyway. Now with this guy, we're also getting a full G-Sync processor built in, not just G-Sync compatibility. And of course, G-Sync helps to reduce screen tearing and smooths out motion even further. Now ASUS says this monitor will give us a 1 millisecond greater grade response time, but you will need to set it to extreme overdrive mode, and this results in some inverse ghosting artifacts around fast moving objects which just don't look great. Much better I think is the normal mode, which is between 2 and 3 milliseconds, which is easily fast enough and it does minimize artifacting. Also good for esports is NVIDIA's Ultra Low Motion Blur, or ULMB, and this helps to minimize motion blur so you can see enemies more clearly by strobing the image. Problem is, this only works up to 240Hz, and it also reduces the brightness and turns off G-Sync. I tried it and it does clean the motion up a little bit, though if you're getting this for less competitive games then I'd leave it off and stick with G-Sync. Now the real problem with this video, aside from my slightly questionable gaming skills, is the fact that it's pretty much impossible for me to show what 360Hz looks like to you watching this a 60fps YouTube video. However, if I slow some gameplay down, you can see just how many more frames we're getting, although it's nowhere near as big of a difference coming from 240. But in reality, playing at 360Hz, and to be honest this goes for 240 as well, it feels awesome. And actually, even switching back to 144Hz is noticeably less smooth, and basic 60Hz just makes me sad now. But don't forget, unless you are getting a stable 360 FPS, which I'm just about getting here in Rainbow Six Siege, you won't be fully taking advantage of this. So really, it all comes down to the games you play. If you're going to fire up some Microsoft Flight Sim or Crisis Remastered, you've not got a chance uh, of getting anything like that. But, you know, if you're playing your CSGOs, your Rainbow Six Sieges or your League of Legends, those sort of things, uh, depending on your PC specs, of course, you should be able to get up to 360. And if not, maybe just tweaking the settings a little bit, you can probably get up there. So where does that leave us? Well, I think it's pretty clear that this probably isn't meant for me. It's pretty small, it's very expensive, and it's right on the edge of what my nearly 30 year old response times and reflexes can even keep up with. What it is though, is a laser focused product that knows exactly what pro gamers and esports gamers want. Small, with the fastest refresh and lowest latency possible, to eke out every tiny little advantage possible when you're playing against other players. And with solid image quality, decent brightness and color accuracy, it's a pretty good all-round monitor as well. Although kind of surprisingly, to me at least, it is definitely an upgrade, a noticeable upgrade, even over 144Hz. That said, for your average gamer like myself, the sweet spot for price, performance and image quality I think is still 27 inches, 1440p at 144Hz. As for competition to this guy, well, there isn't really any, or at least not that you can buy right now. You'll have to wait until November for the Dell Alienware 25 or MSI's upcoming Oculux monitor, as well as Acer's Predator X25, 
But what do you think? Would you be tempted to buy something like this? Do you think 360Hz is overkill or it's like a must have if you're gonna get those wins in Call of Duty or League of Legends? Let me know what you think of this Asus monitor in the comments below. And if you do wanna see more from me, don't forget to hit that little subscribe button down below and like and share and all those good things. It does make a difference. And I'm always uh, keen to keep growing this tech chat community. We're almost at a million subscribers, which is amazing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time right here on the tech chat.